We all have a, uh, a general picture of what smart cities means in India and around the world. But when you, which if you were to do as uh, our earlier speaker, the colonel said, ask a young man in the street, what does a smart city mean? I think the answer might be a little weak as to what it is. It might even be a little weak if you asked a mayor of a city what it is. So why don't you talk a little bit about what do you see smart in India, especially smart cities in India, paying attention to, and uh, what, let's say five years from now, what should be the difference in cities in India? Uh, when you started the smart cities mission around one year ago, uh, as the minister said, there really was no single definition of a smart city either in the world or in India. And the challenge was to capture this diversity of cities and the people in India. So the first important feature of the smart city was we thought that one good way of capturing this was to have a competition which was citizen driven. So the smart cities were selected through a competition. And in the competition, what was to be evaluated, it was a smart city proposal. And what is the proposal? The proposal contains a strategy which the people sort of decide to become smart. Therefore, unlike other missions or programs, this is a completely bottom up. There are no prescriptive uh, definitions been given from Delhi. In fact, only a few definitional boundaries have been given that this is the goal of the smart city. Now, what was the definitional boundary given? Number one, you have to have basic services. You cannot have a smart city without water, you know, assured electricity, street lights, roads. So there are, if you look at a smart city, the Indian version is that it consists of three layers. The first is basic services. Then as you know, India is known for leapfrogging using technology. The second was you apply technology, especially IT, to the services infrastructure to improve them. And the third was the livability component, which is you pick up one area in a city, develop it completely, and then replicate it throughout the city and in other cities. So this is what a smart city was. And we did this competition. It was a two-stage competition among 100 cities, and 20 cities were selected. And surprisingly, you know, big cities, you always thought Bombay would be selected. Bombay was not selected. It just lost out. And fairly medium-sized cities were selected. Therefore, the citizen knows what they've asked for. And five years down, they prepared an implementation plan in which they put the tasks with timelines. Three to five years down, what is going to transform that city is known. And all this now we've put on the website. Those 20 city proposals, the strategies, the tactics is on the website. Um, it is extremely citizen driven. Two and a half million citizens participated through MyGov, which is the government of India. Um, it's a website which has a mobile connectivity. Besides that, there were 12 million people who participated through other means, that is direct person to person contacts, mobile phones being used by municipal commissioners, websites of the cities. You know, then they had these wireless hops, hotspots mobile ha wireless hotspots and buses. In cities like Kakinada, you know, they, they use braille lo laptops in order to ensure that uh, the differently able people could also participate and give their suggestions. And this is actually one of the reasons why Kakinada won also. So it was, usually if you look at urban planning, it doesn't start from citizens. Citizens come where, somewhere in the in-between or the end. But this was citizen-led. First, the cities went to citizens, what were the needs, the issues and priorities, and then they started building on that and built the entire smart city plan or proposal as we call it. And now the implementation starts, which is the challenge. Now, regarding implementation, I am reminded of Larry Summers who was here around two months ago and earlier he had said, he was asked about the execution gap. And you know, he made a very insightful observation. He says that it's a promiscuous distribution of veto power in India. 
So you go to a city, there are some 20 or 30 actors who can always veto anything. Therefore, we had to build a structure within the municipal governance and which was a company. So the smart cities will be executed by a company which is being set up within each city in the form of a special purpose vehicle. It will be governed by the Companies Act. It will be fairly autonomous but yet accountable to the local body because the equity shareholdings of the local body and the state. Of course, the private equity can also come in later. This company will have, you see, much more choices in the sense of entering into JV or public-private partnerships and thereby accessing a lot of private capital also. These 100 cities roughly will require around $30 billion and of this uh, $30 billion, um, around uh, $15 billion will come from the government and another three to four billion dollars from convergence to other programs and uh, some measures taken to enhance the taxes and fees of these cities. So more than 10 billion dollars has to come from the private sector and this is where we hope that the SPV and the company will be an important instrument to access because it provides that predictability, that consistency in regulation, that consistency and immunity from political upheavals. So that's how the SPV was designed and supposed to be established. Thank you. Good. So now we have uh, a chance to uh, hear and compare from the private sector. Uh, how do you see the future smart cities? And Javant, the, uh, uh, there's uh, both a technological aspect of smart cities, but there's clearly also a great engagement aspect, as the minister stated, in terms of getting citizens involved. And it sounds like this is a very novel, and I compliment you on the approach you've taken is very engaging. But talk a little bit about Cisco's view of smart cities, and especially both your vision of where this will take India, and secondly, what are some of the challenges that you see in the future? Yeah, just to, uh, just to give the background, around 35 to 37 percent people live in uh, cities today, while the cities uh, contribute almost like 60 plus percent of the GDP of the country. And practically the way the urbanization is happening and people move from rural uh, domains to cities, there is an expectation of life. Uh, there is better quality of life, better job opportunity, that's how they move. Now, whether cities have been able to deliver uh, what to and meet their expectations is something for sure we know we have, we have perhaps lagged on that side. As we see things moving ahead, and especially uh, and contribute, I will uh, rather compliment the government and the way this 100 smart city program is a complete paradigm shift. There used to be situations where uh, Dr. Sharma also mentioned that these projects used to be run in silos, where it would be like there's a, there's a police organization building some projects within the city, there will be municipal corporations, there will be urban development authorities, there will be transport authorities, all working in silos doing their own projects. Now this approach uh, of forming a company, forming a SPV to execute smart city uh, as a vision is something which is really a change, which is a huge paradigm shift. The program which uh, came in as 100 smart cities and now selected as 20 cities, it's 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 very comprehensive program, uh, very uh, competitive as well. Like this, this has been never a situation where cities were competing with each other in such a way that uh, they were trying to put the best of the proposals. And we have been part of many of those uh, meetings and uh, discussions with various cities. Uh, it has it has it is really a change. On the other hand, it, is, it was such an inclusive program, and you said uh, what, that's, the success, that's going to be the success of this program. If citizens are contributing and giving their views, what they expect in a city, and that becomes a part of the proposal itself, is something which is highly appreciated. While also with regard to the technology innovation, and that, that was also given a, great, a substantial weightage in these proposals, is also uh, led whatever infra we have, whether it's roads or water or waste disposal systems. But when you bring technology on top of it, the same infra becomes much smarter. 
and uh, smarter. That's that's the basically the origin of smart cities and leveraging this the existing infra or maybe developing the infra, leveraging the technology and making it smarter. And looking at all the aspects and the current challenges, if we if we really see uh, while this program is getting run. One is obviously uh, the approach of integrating everything in a city and looking at a city vision and not as uh, independent departments vision. The second is going to be the funds. And Dr. Sharma also mentioned about the requirement of the funds, the way it will come. But when we look at the funds, one uh, aspect was said that maybe aggregation of some of these projects will help uh, generate some funds. On the other side, reducing the cost of the existing uh, services which are, which are currently in a city while also monetizing some of the assets which will get created under these programs in terms of revenue and optimization as well. That's going to be the way perhaps this, the, the funds will get accumulated. While obviously, while the governments are contributing, both state governments and central government, there will be a contribution coming in from private players as we see the opportunities now getting well defined for the sector, as well as there will be opportunities in terms of how they can monetize and, rev and operationalize the revenue side of these things. Other thing which is very important is that when these projects are getting developed and within the city, and we have worked with uh, many authorities, the availability of resources, both in terms of technology and in terms of finance, is something uh, is going to be a bit of uh, initial challenges. But for sure, the way the program is getting scaled up and the way the engagement of uh, private uh, uh, organizations and we have uh, participation from LNT as well. The cons large construction companies, infra companies who have already been in this business and leveraging uh, technology as well on top of it will certainly be the, the source of how these projects move forward. One very important aspect of uh, the proposals which have been submitted was the action oriented plans and also the way uh, how these projects will be executed in time frame. Now, usually, many of these government-led uh, programs, either on because on the time domain, they get some somewhere lost because the procurement processes, as well as defining it and then multiple iterations, that causes a bit of challenge. Now, the whole approach, and that was a part of the proposal, that how will we execute on an on a action, and that on a time domain, and the cities which actually took less necessary approvals beforehand while they submitted the proposals, actually are the ones who got selected. Another example, like few states contributing almost three cities, while there are few states who could not even present any city under this initial uh, 20 uh, cities list. So that's the that's approach which has is, which is changed, uh, Jerry. And, uh, and that is what we are calling it as a paradigm shift in the current environment. Good. So <coughs> I want to, because the minister is going to leave early, I want to ask him one more question before I get to no problem. L &T. The uh, w in my experience, one of the interesting things about Michael Bloomberg as the mayor of New York, and I know he had a hand in helping think through this competition, the thing about Michael Bloomberg that was different than most mayors in New York was that he would create a program, and then a year later he would show back up and ask, how much progress have you made? And even if you've made progress, he would say, well, why not double it? If you've made progress, why not do two times? But he didn't let people sort of drift away and not be watched, and that relates to the execution issue because we all can dream great dreams. The question is, can we execute these dreams, do real things? So I gather, listening to uh, Javad, that there was a message about these first 20 cities, they were, why they were chosen, and probably the rest of the 80 or all the cities of India are kind of listening. So what is the message to the rest of the cities of India based on the um, first 20 that were chosen? The, the evaluators who evaluated the smart city plan, um, the first mandate given to them was the results orientation and doability of the proposal. How doable it was. Okay. You know, if it was ideas, academic work, talking about new urbanism, all that was not required. Okay. Even if you talked about an idea, how you would apply it to India, how you would apply it to your city, how you would connect it to what citizens are saying, how you would connect it to your financial inflows in the past. So you couldn't make big projections which is not based on the past. You couldn't just talk of thoughts or just some dreams. How will you convert that dream into a reality? Vision was fine, but then every step had to be tied into the vision. So the message to all the cities is, 
in India. If you plan well, if the plan is based on citizen consultations, if it's based on realistic resource inflows which you're expected to get, and if it by and large it follows the you know the big themes of the smart city mission, sustainability, basic services, application of technology to improve infrastructure services, and to have areas being developed integrated in an integrated way and then upscaling this development throughout the city. That was the message from this competition, first around the competition. Good. Well, I think that's a, uh, a message I hope cities across India are listening to because it See, will lead a, to change. This is perhaps, I've been now 33 years in government, this is perhaps the only mission or program in which the citizen and the municipal managers know the, more than all of us. You yeah. go to a city, you go to Kakinada tomorrow, you go to Vaisak tomorrow, talk to the people, talk to the commissioner, they know everything about mission. And that was strategically done, it was inverted, you know. Because they have sort of participated in that, they have participated in a discussion, they have participated in uh, giving their suggestions, they participated in what will work, they have given citizen driven solutions. So, you see, this is that way it's an inversion of m the way emissions are rolled out in India. Good. So, uh, LT plays a big role in the uh, sort of the foundation of smart cities. Uh, big projects, uh, infrastructure, digital infrastructure. Uh, a key piece of where smart cities head, also an expensive piece. Infrastructure is expensive, it's big. So talk to us about uh, what you see in terms of your company's role in smart cities. Uh, what are the challenges you think we're facing? You've got the minister here. If there's a thing which still needs to be solved, what is it? I think we'd all like to know that. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. <coughs> and it's absolute pleasure to be here and also pleasure to sh share dais with Mr. Sharma who's the architecture of uh, smart cities. So I sense, uh, and uh, from also from the Larson to Bros perspective, smart city is a big mega trend we see as a business opportunity. And we don't see that uh, this business opportunity only limiting to Indian companies, but it's an opportunity for, I would say, all the global companies. It's a great way to collaborate, bring technology in the Indian market, showcase the you know, development on the uh, ground, and also get connected to the last mile. Uh, in the opening remarks, what uh, Minister also mentioned about opening up the minds, it's a great message. And this smart city, in a way, is also a message to all of us that what smart things India could do, what bigger and better things India could do. And as uh, Mr. Sharma also, but Dr. Sorry, um, Dr. Sharma also mentioned, now this message has reached to the uh, like now uh, last mile. And I also, as part of uh, industry body FICI, we have been to the number of cities and we have done a lot of handholding seminars there. So we see that action on the ground. Cities, uh, people, communities, they're all interested, all excited, all wish to contribute. And also the community forum, the citizen forums, which have been created at various cities. They want to come up with solutions, suggestions, um, you know, improvement ideas. And I'm sure that is going to benefit all of us. Uh, having said that, of course, there are huge challenges. As they say, Rome was not built in a day. So, and we all know what Singapore was 50 years uh, back, what, uh, uh, you know, Spain or, uh, sorry, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So what, how they, they have changed the landscape of uh, city in last 50 odd years, that kind of time frame India would also need. And all the bigger cities will take that uh, time. Also the smaller cities uh, which are already uh, taking that kind of initiatives, uh, more so on the digital space uh, where they want to uh, make their cities connected, also digitally enabled by which uh, the younger uh, folks could take advantage of it, of this um, you know, uh, uh, e-commerce wave and could bring uh, value uh, to their lives. So one uh, key uh, takeaway is the quality of life. Second uh, key takeaway what I see is the sustainability. And if I have to uh, say something from my organization's perspective, uh, 
We being the leading player from the infra as well as the digital domain, would like to con contribute in uh, providing the turnkey solution where we act as a master system integrator. We take help companies from Cisco's, IBM's, others, and get the best of the technology which is available on this globe and create the possible solution which is also you know, beneficial as also cost cost effective. Uh, uh, just to uh, add in there, we have got some you know, things moving on the uh, ground. Uh, and one key example I would like to narrate and I would also like to thank the city leadership there is the city of Jaipur. It's not a big town, but the city of ja Jaipur in a their small way had tried to transform their city by creating an enabling digital solution which is helping the local community. And I'm sure there likewise there will be other cities which I also like to follow them. Thank you. The, uh, I'm watching the clock here because yeah. you have to yeah. you have to depart right at 10:45. Yeah, 10:45, 10:50. So that's about one minute. So oh, okay. let's let's take a uh, quick uh, one minute. Uh, uh, what do you what do you need from uh, this audience? What what role can they play in helping you and uh, Prime Minister Modi succeed at smart cities? Um. Start participating in the city activities. You know, uh, that's a big role you all have to play. In fact, one of the key uh, changes which we are proposing the smart city is to give the operations and maintenance of civic services to what we call communities of interest. The people who are most positively benefited or adversely affected by sweeping by water supply, they should control the human resources and the funds. This vertical control extending up to the mayor and then going beyond to the state, that is one thing we are trying to dismantle and give much more horizontal decision making, which is real decision making, just not giving a letter, a complaint, but actually you know, participating through information technology, social media. So this is one message, uh, I would say, because you know, with your experience and knowledge, you can contribute a lot to your local areas and larger zones beyond your wards. So that is one big message I thought uh, I would be able to give to you. Good. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. And if you need to slip out, we're going to continue this conversation with the two of us. And it's good to see you again. We were in Barcelona together, so we've, uh, it's a nice to reunite. So. Yeah, I'm going to talk about your BKC. Sure, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's the way we are going to have the contract. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'll talk about yeah. that. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Shah. All right, Dr. Shah. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. See it. Thank you, Mr. Sharma, for joining us. Uh, I leave the session open for some Q&A. Let's do that. So let's take questions from the audience. You've got two very talented and uh, significant players in smart cities. So one question here. There's a microphone. Yeah, my name is Baljeet Singh. Uh, I have two observations. You know, there is a lot of emphasis on citizenry uh, input. I just wanted to know who are these citizens who are giving this input and what is their qualification to give this input, yes? Mm -hmm. And the second question I have is that this smart city, these 20 uh, cities, how many people are affected by this? And uh, what exactly uh, are they going to gain in terms of quality of life? Thank you. So uh, that's uh, a, a good set of questions. And let's take answers. I have some thoughts on it too. But I'm going to first yeah, take uh, Cisco's uh, view and then Dr. LNT's Sharma view. has left, but uh, perhaps the whole, um, the whole program actually was governed by Dr. Sharma while he is the Ministry of Urban Development. However, what we know uh, from our interactions with the cities and uh, the, the citizen participation uh, was pretty inclusive in terms of it was not like very selected people or qualified people. It was open for all. Uh, the, the plan was that uh, under the Smart City mission, which we know is they listed out a few questions uh, for survey, and it was openly circulated through portals, through uh, doing some kind of a nukar sabhas, doing skits and doing print media, doing even vans, and then the feedback was collected. So it was, it was rather the objective of uh, citizen participation was to have much wider inclusion, 
and uh, then subsequently we also understand that there were there have been meetings with the people who were perhaps more keen to even give more detailed views and uh, we have we have seen that happening in uh, mp like all the seven cities which were nominated uh, each city ran its own program uh, for citizen participation and and if you see the weightage was also around 16 17% which came in because of the participation and inclusiveness uh, second, uh, I think maybe you, know, you want to add on to that particular question, but uh, I don't know which, I just missed the second yeah. question. Yeah, thanks, uh, Puru. Sorry. Take a quick answer and then we may get other questions, but give him a... Sure, thanks, Yuri. Yeah, so in terms of citizen participation, you know, there were a lot of uh, avenues uh, which were, you know, informed and developed by the local uh, ULBs. So one was, of course, the digital platform. Second was, uh, there was, uh, uh, like uh, forums uh, where citizen forums and also citizen uh, participation events were conducted uh, by all most of the cities i personally was there at chennai at pune uh, also at smaller places like solapur and they tried to identify which are the key themes for the city so for uh, let's say for pune it was kind of you know, transportation is a key theme for uh, uh, like chennai you know uh, solid waste management for Ajmer, uh, the how to you know more economic activities for that city have we convert or transform the religious uh, tourist town to other uh, like bring in more economic development. So likewise, based on that thing, there were dialogues which were uh, like uh, uh, organized and citizen participation was quite huge, quite encouraging and I think quite enlightening as well. And a lot of uh, inputs which were given by the local citizen was that ideas were taken and around that ideas now they are trying to build up the solution which would be rolled out in next let's say uh, six to eight months down the line another point you to mention about uh, the quality of life in fact uh, uh, I also mentioned earlier that is the key theme of this smart cities because uh, the existing infrastructure for the cities is quite stressed. You know, we don't want to spend uh, three hours traveling from A location to B location and you know spend uh, our working uh, time sitting in a, a vehicle, thereby you know impacting the economic output as well as the uh, efficiency. So there, uh, like cities are thinking a lot, of trying to also see. What could be the, you know, how the digital technology could play a, play a role there, how we could have more e efficiency built into it, and at the end of the day, the solution which will be created will be for the citizens. Thank you. I think the, uh, the other thing I'd like to add to your question is, uh, let's think of it as a race to quality. That is, we begin to demonstrate what a great city looks like using smart and other technology, uh, other techniques you begin to attract talent to that city and other cities notice that and then they begin to pursue similar examples so in some ways what uh, the Modi government has done is created a marketplace of ideas and they'll model this in these first 20 cities and then it spreads we're seeing the same thing in China Chinese mayors are clear if I'm gonna have a city with smart people in it I've got to get a clean uncongested city and that dynamic is powerful because then mayors across a large country like China or India, state governments say, I want the best cities in my province. So it becomes an energetic process that goes way beyond the 20 cities or 100 cities. Next question, yep. right here. And then what, yep. uh, okay, you're next. Good morning to all. Uh, my uh, introduction, I'm a citizen of India, uh, have been voting <laughs> year on year. And uh, this is what I would like to stop with my basic introduction. Of course, a technocrat also. Uh, I've been listening to the words and the discussions which are happening here. And uh, one of uh, the points which was addressed here is that uh, approaching the lo local government organizations, uh, proposing views, opinions, and trying to pursue things that they move forward. But there itself, I find some challenge as far as I as an individual am concerned. How do we kill the local level bureaucracy so that we go up to the senior levels and express ourselves and be participant in the execution part of it? Honestly speaking, these are ground level questions, but yeah. uh, I do suppose uh, every Indian citizen would not deny from it completely. <laughs> Thank so you. we're getting pressure from the uh, managers to uh, wrap this up, so we have quick answers. I think the proposal which was submitted uh, and the invited by Ministry of Urban Development while the, the, uh, the whole thing was evaluated, almost 50% of the weightage is on account of action orientation and the plan, how it will be executed in a time frame. 
And uh, if you go through many of these proposals uh, of the cities which actually got selected, uh, and why the remaining 80 cities still need to do a lot of work to reach that stage was this particular approach only. And uh, forming an SPV, looking at how the funds will be generated, looking at how the execution plan in terms of uh, procurement process will be there, and even few states uh, going to the cabinet and getting all the rights assigned to the SPV was a part of the action orientation uh, approach. And yeah. I think that's, that's one of the key criteria for uh, moving uh, forward. As far as the bureaucracy or participation of the citizens in this plan, uh, for sure, uh, because municipal body itself is an elected body, and it's an uh, inclusive, inclusive, inclusive uh, approach that we have. While uh, the SPV will be uh, the one who will be responsible for execution and will be taking directions from both from the elected body as well as the, the larger bureaucracy of the city. So that's something which I believe has enough weightage for the action-oriented action -oriented approach uh, for smart city plan. Let's say more. Yeah, I think Puru has already mentioned, but just to add in, and uh, being another technocrat, I would say that uh, if you have to reach out, you could also use the digital media. Most of this uh, ULBs or the leadership is on Twitter, on Facebook, or on uh, any other platform. So that is also a good way to connect with them. Uh, otherwise, there are citywide uh, forums available by which you could share your ideas, grievances, or also suggestions. And in terms of implementation plan, Puru has already narrated. So it's a quite a structured program. And I'm sure uh, we all are going to gain from it. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to give you the, I, you can actually make a statement, and we probably won't answer it. So okay. the perfect uh, opportunity. Great. Uh, so the only statement that I want to make is that I'm really tempted to introduce myself as a woman citizen of India following him. And I'm just really keen to know, I know if Mr. Sharma was here, it would have been perfect to pose these questions to him. But is there uh, an awareness that when we talk generic about people and citizens, then we definitely know that large sections of women are left behind. So is there an awareness, uh, including if we begin from, say, the special purpose vehicles, that how are we going to ensure the participation, the engagement, the access, the benefits, everything for the women and girls of this country? Okay. It would be very easy for me to begin with safety. So smart cities to be safe cities, but that's not what I want to choose because that's the obvious one. But really looking at, can we ensure representation, participation, decision-making of women and girls in everything across the smart cities uh, discourse, conversation, yeah. implementation, yeah. monitoring, and evaluation. I come from UN Women, and we'll be very happy to work with everybody here to take that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for good questions and comments. Thank you to the panel. Thank you very much. Uh, for uh, a great set of answers. They'll be here for you can talk to them some more. And we appreciate very much this opportunity to set off this great discussions today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.